And the drill master setting up a tea party, I'll tell you, he's, he was able to stand back there and pick out his man and throw it nice and easy. Nebraska in the power eye, and Taggy takes pitches off. It goes to Rogers. Rogers to the two. He's in. Touchdown. on the left side he took the white pitch and dance nice watch somebody and that fellow's got a hurt all over here's the try for the point the ball is down the kick is up by paul rogers into the wind right through the middle seven to nothing van brownson was in the hole able to be disciplined enough first and ten nebraska ingles split wide on the right end the quarterback taggy calling the starting count he gives over there to kitty kitty breaking into the line to about the nine yard line Jeff Wright, the captain and cornerback on the right side, gets credit for the stop on Kitty. Short of a first down by about a yard. The ball is at the nine of the Gophers. It actually is just a shade more than a yard needed. And it's at the nine-yard line of Minnesota. It's on the hash mark in from the, the right. Side. And the game again is to Kitty. Kitty diving over. Touchdown. And Dick Rupert and Donnie McGee, Bob Newton and Wally Winter, they just steamroll them out of there. They look like the Panzer Division up front, I'll tell you. Maybe that's a good name for those guys, Dave, the Panzers. They're looking for some kind of a handle to hang on them. The Black Shirts have got one. Make sure you say Panzers correctly, because if you call them Panzers, uh, I'll tell you, Newton will kill us. I wouldn't want to be around. <laughs> big pig, but really work you over. The ball is down. Rogers' kick is up, and it's good. For Nebraska, they split men left and right, and Taggy pitches out over there to Arduno, who's going to throw into the end zone. To little guy Ingles, touchdown. but that was just that funny. Ingles was so alone, he could have sat down and knit one and pearls two. He just was all by himself, and Arduna threw that ball like a falling leaf into that wind, and all a guy could do was just stand there and wait, and it must have been an interminable <laughs> wait, but it finally fell in his hands, but there was nobody close. Try for the point. It's up and it's good. And it's 21 to 7. Nebraska leads in this first quarter with a minute and 50 seconds left to play. Dave, it's first and that's something to see. Well, I'll tell you, that's the worst thrown pass I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and it kind of reminds you that the pheasant season opens in Nebraska November 7. <laughs> I tell you, Orjuna threw it in the air. They picked it up on radar, I think, at the Minneapolis airport. It was a, it's the worst thrown pass I've ever seen. But Engels was so alone that, uh, you know, he looked like one of those... Uh, Dentine commercials or something. Well, we don't mean that disparaging of Joe. Joe threw a soft pass, and the pass on a normal day would have been fine, but into this 23-mile-an-hour wind, that thing just flip-flopped all the way to Ingles. That's very nice, Ralph, it was a lot <laughs> I'll tell you, Joe, well, well, he's got a deal. Nebraska, not going to go for a field goal. They lead 28-10. to 10. They want to stick in another touchdown if they can, but those gophers have a lot of feet hanging up over that... Uh, that goal line, and they're protecting it well up to now. Taggy rolling out to his right. He's going to throw. Touchdown. <laughs> Terry Taggy had, you know who, little guy Ingles, and he beat number 28, Mike White. And White just threw up his hands, looking at the Minnesota bench. He just threw his hands in the air as much as to say, what could I do? He just plain beat him. Ingles broke into the middle, then cut for the sideline. Taggy laid it right in his sticky fingers. So the Cornhuskers now lead 34 to 10, and Rogers will try another one into the wind. Brownson will hold the ball. Rogers has not missed this year. Here he is kicking into the wind again, and it's good. And the score is 35 to 10. Nebraska over the Gophers with 13 minutes left to play in the ball game. Paul Rogers is going to have to kick it into the wind again now. As Nebraska going against the wind in this quarter, watch him jump around out there. He's constantly in motion before that ball is snapped. 
third and eight and a half. Minnesota Morgan on a rollout to the right. He's being chased by Glover. He got away from Glover. He fires a long, long pass. Cush intercepts for Nebraska. He's on his feet to the 30. He's to the 20, 35, the 40. To the 45, and down he goes at the 45-yard line of Nebraska. And oh, boy. And somebody was blocking for Cush. Dave, did you get it, or were you caught in the crowd? No, I... Really think that's oh, a good point. <laughs> you know, the thing I like about you, David, is you're so alert. <laughs> Put that ball at the 45. You're such a hell. Oh, love that man. Put it at the 45. <laughs> the 45 of Nebraska. Ball game. Game. We have a minute and 23 left. Morgan, the quarterback for University of Minnesota, in there to throw. He throws over the middle, and that pass was intercepted. Upfield comes the uh, Nebraska man with the ball, Howdy. Augie runs to the 45. He's still running, and he tucks the ball in as he's decked at the 43. How oh, about that? <laughs> that pass was actually knocked down first by the Nebraska quarterback. He cut in front of the receiver, and I think it was uh, Blaha who deflected the ball, and it bounced into the hands of Bruce Hauge. And Hauge, the big guy, 220-pound linebacker, ran to the 43 of Minnesota, Whereas Nebraska first and ten, and how uh, the home folks must like to see Bruce Hauge playing that kind of football, as well as Monty Johnson. These are two kids right from this area. And there's the ball game. Nebraska wins it, 35 to 10, here at Memorial Stadium in Minneapolis. They were a nine-point favorite. They won by 25. How about that? <laughs>